<laughs> Justin would have murdered us if we did that. <laughs> He would sit there and be like, I leave these two idiots alone for one For one day, one podcast, and they just assault, they just destroy them. Cancun! All right. <laughs> Welcome back to episode 33 of the Coconut Curry podcast. Uh, this is just a podcast about some college guys talking about sports, uh, life, kind of just everything that uh, has been going on with us. Uh, this week, uh, it's, it's just going to be myself and Raj here. Oh Justin is currently in Florida. I believe he just finished up the script while he was in the airport in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> so shout out to our buddy Justin. Unfortunately, he can't dance on the next grave today, but yeah. that'll be for next time. Uh, but yeah, so we've got a decent amount to discuss uh, today. So please, if you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, Follow us. Uh, listen to us on Spotify. Fund my gambling addiction, please. Fund Raj's gambling addiction. He's had some rough goes at it recently, so uh, we need all the help we can get. So let's just—I guess let's just get right into it. So, yeah. Uh, f- well, first of all, we got to do our disgruntled moments of the week. So, yep. Raj, talk to us about your gambling addiction. <laughs> Yeah, so um, you know, I've been hitting some great parlays lately. Just a quick fill. Phillies have been on fire. Easy parlays, you know, an Alec Bohm hit, a Bryson Stott hit. The over on um strikeouts for Ranger Suarez is always a guaranteed. Amazing. But um, you know, when the Phillies play the Nationals, who are not that good, I expect Bryce Harper to go out there and have a revenge game against his former team every single time. Mm-hmm. But of course, it's baseball, and. Players sometimes don't play as well one game. And of course, yeah. the one game I bet on, <laughs> Bryce Harper went 0 for 4. I don't understand how I always manage to bet on the games. He does that because the next game he goes 3 for 4. Then after that, he goes <laughs> 2 for 4. And he's popping off every game since I bet on him. Please, I don't know if I'm helping the Phillies, but it's not helping my bank account. So, for the love of God, Bryce, if I bet on you, just please get a goddamn hit. You're minus 250 to get one goddamn hit. Yeah, I'm looking at his stats right now. He's he's batting 280, so not so pretty good not terrible nothing like insane but like very like pretty consistent hitter there to get a hit <laughs> like pretty pretty consistent there so that's a real tough look there um so oh, my i also have another gambling oh, story keep going keep going yep let's so, hear um let's see um i don't know what went through my head when i saw og come back and think hey maybe he's Why gonna pop off this game brother and you know I didn't really read the injury report. I didn't read too much into it. I thought it was a minor <laughs> hamstring aggravation. So I was like, okay, you Brother. know what? Surely he'll get nine points. And he this was, close. was he in five. there for two minutes. <laughs> like, I mean, he was great efficiency, two minutes, five points, a three and a, a like a, like a simple yeah. jumper. Like I was like, oh, I'm on great track right now. No. And then he, he just came out the out. game and it just never came back. <laughs> the only legs that did not hit in that lay was OG not getting nine points. That's brutal dude that's so brutal i should have um, bet the under but oh well you know what you know what hindsight's always 2020 and because yep. remember 100 percent of gamblers walk away before they win big so you gotta yeah, just keep gambling some more <laughs> gotta deposit some more exactly uh so my disgruntled moment of the week uh for the second week in a row is my ac unit that i did put into the wall um Last week, I talked about how I found dead bugs in there, and, uh, well, here's the thing. I was like, you know, I'll probably be able to hold out, like, get a new AC unit, and then this week, it was, at minimum, 82 degrees every single day. Uh, so my And my room, as you can tell for those that are watching on YouTube, uh, there's a lot of sunlight that's trying to come through here. It is directly in the path of the sun the entire day. So my room heats up like to 95 degrees, like very quickly. And hopefully you can't hear that crappy AC unit in the back. But anyway, I had to plug that thing in the wall. And what I did was I have my air purifier and I just, I turned, I put my AC unit and turned it on and then put my air purifier right in front of it. And it was red for like five minutes. (laughs) I was letting that thing run. Oh my god, there was so much <laughs> dust and just crap in it. But oh thank god, god I had that air purifier because 
the pollen and the dust that's been building up, especially because we're also in Pittsburgh. The air quality already isn't great. So, you know, with my deviated septum, I already can't breathe through my nose half the time. So then just sucking in some dirty ass air behind me would be a great move. But uh, yeah, so basically I hate my AC unit, but I have to suffer through it. Um, well, I yeah. mean, um, with the AC, I remember because um, Andres has stopped working. Oh, and yeah. I, I, I opened it up, and to my surprise, <laughs> we figured out that Lantern Flies made a nest in his AC unit, and that explained a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, for those that don't know, Lantern Flies are like this invasive species of bug that kind of just like showed up out of nowhere on like most of the East Coast, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, but they. I swear to God, they show up and then there's millions of them out of nowhere and then they just disappear. Like, I don't know where they go. They just die and then show back up. I don't know, like, because we actually, I had a salt gun that I was using on them (laughs) this past summer. Hopefully, knock on wood, it's not as bad this year. Doesn't seem like it's going to be as bad because I haven't seen a ton yet. Again, knock on wood, Jesus Christ, I'm going to say this and they're going to be covering our house again. But last year was terrible so that makes a lot of sense actually why there were so many on our house because it was literally a nest in andres's brand new ac unit <laughs> I, oh, I couldn't believe God. my eyes when i opened it and i'm just like what the hell is that <laughs> what is that <laughs> oh my Holy god it was so bad all right well let's get into sports uh obviously baseball has been going on in the background no one really cares yet because it's not Whatever. october all right whatever also hockey's been going on rangers made the eastern conference final that's Uh, literally the only note because nobody else watches hockey here even though i've been very hyped about it um anyway so playoff report last time we recorded uh nixon pacers were tied 2-2 denver and minnesota were tied 2-2 dallas was up 3-2 celtics were up 3-2 uh so the one that i kind of want to just brush past really fast is celtics mavs um or celtics were up 3-1 that's right yeah um Let's just blow past the Celtics Cavs because, like, we knew the Celtics Whatever. were going to gentlemen sweep them. Like, they look the Celtics do this thing every single time they play a series. They look amazing. One of the games, they look absolutely terrible, and then they look game fine two. for the rest of it. Always yeah, game, game two. two, almost every single time. They always lose. They split it home every time, and then they're just fine for the rest of it. It. Yeah. I don't know why that happens, but it does. They look great. They look like one of the most complete teams out there, but they got. They have probably the easiest finals run I've seen in a long time. <laughs> they so went Mickey up against Mouse. the Heat, who were injured. Without Jimmy Butler. <laughs> the Cavs, who were injured. <laughs> and now they're going against the Pacers, who aren't that good. Even though the Pacers, we'll get into it later, they did hold their own uh, just by trying to shoot the lights out the gym. But they were either going to play the injured Knicks or the Pacers, who are very inconsistent. <laughs> so they have a free shot to the finals, and they're probably going to get obliterated by whoever gets there. But yep. let's address the elephant of the room. Knicks did lose in seven. Uh, I always thought, th- I'm pretty sure I said Knicks in either six or seven. Um, but I mean, it was it was very clear that like, you know, obviously game five, Knicks blow out the, ca- the, uh, the Pacers at home go to Indianapolis, they end up lighting it. The Pacers end up lighting it up, go back to Madison Square Garden. It's like, all right, Hart was clearly hurt this past game. OG might be able to play, but they're gonna they're both gonna play through it. We're gonna see what we can do. And they just did not look like themselves very clearly. Mm-hmm. And at that and then I think partway through the game, Jalen Brunson breaks his hand and it's just yeah, like and like in halfway through the fourth he fell on his hand or something. Yeah, so injuries just obliterated this team. And also, like, there was damn near no team in the NBA that was going to be able to beat the Pacers that night when they, at one point, were shooting, like, 75% that from the field. Insanity. Yeah, it I, was like... I don't they, understand how. They just didn't miss shots, like, period. Yeah. They, they were shooting, like, 50% from three and uh, 75% from the field up until, mm-hmm. like, the third quarter. It's like, yeah. no one is stopping that. Like, there's nothing you can do. Like, like they hung 70, 70 points and a half, which is nuts. Yeah, it's, it, that's insane. That's putting up nearly, like, a low-scoring game total in one half. Mm-hmm. Like, it yep. was unreal. All credit to the Pacers there. They looked incredible. They were not losing that game because 
they just couldn't miss. I mean, that's just yeah. the facts. Like they couldn't miss. Obviously it sucks because the Knicks didn't really have like some of their guys like Robinson or OG to be able to kind of play some more defense because Sergei Ibaka looked ridiculous. He was an absolute matchup nightmare. Um, but you wait, know. wait, you mean Siakam? Siakam. Why am I saying Sergei? I, mixed Sergei Ibaka hasn't been in the league for years. I know. I said it. I was like, that's not, I, I didn't think that was his name. I was like, <laughs> wasn't he on the, he was on like the heat team in like 2013 whatever yeah whatever let's see <laughs> whatever <laughs> no please please don't do me dirty like this this is so no, embarrassing wait, wait is he a celtics bench player no way he's still in the league he definitely retired please don't do me this, he's like still this. In the league. ha he is still in the league he's still playing oh no no he's playing for bayern munich in um the european basketball he's playing for the german oh god Okay, ignoring me having a <laughs> stroke right there. Yes. Um, he was a matchup nightmare. And it, like, at the end of the day, the Knicks clearly, like, as much as it does suck that they lost game seven, they were not doing shit to the Celtics that injured. No. Um, and I feel like the Knicks have really built, like, a good culture there where it's like, it is like New York basketball, where, like, it is a tough, gritty team that is going to like play you hard no matter who's on the court. Like as much as I hate that Halliburton only chirps when he's up 10 and he's shooting well, but like you get like DiVincenzo who's like the role guy going up to him and is like talking back to him down 15. Like he doesn't care. It's like, yeah, I'm going to chirp you because you're not talking to me like that. Like, I love that. Like Josh Hart obviously is like the heart and soul of this team. Brunson looked incredible for mo- for basically the entire playoff run. I think the Knicks going forward, I think they should try to run it back as best they can. I mean, they kind of do need like a defender, big mm. kind of guy. I mean, that's kind of what OG is, but I feel like they need like another big to go al- alongside Hartenstein because Robinson's good at defense, but he's also like a liability on offense. Very so big it's liability. Like, yeah. So it's like he kind of, we need somebody else to be able to like, play off of uh hartenstein because like when the knicks crash the offensive rebounds and they just start shooting there's almost no teams that are going to be able to keep up with them so great run for the knicks so happy Mm -hmm. that that this ended up going through pacers great series you're gonna get smoked by the celtics (laughs) but it would be really funny if you didn't because that would be sick because i would love to watch boston cry if the Pacers made the NBA Finals, dude. I'm going to reconsider every like prediction I've ever made. Dude, oh my god. They would get obliterated by whoever comes out of the West. Anyway. Oh my god. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of... Yeah, that was mostly just the, the next Pacers series. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, we already talked about Celtics-Mavs. Yep. Mavs, now we have... Mavs. Um, <laughs> let's yeah. do... Oh yeah, Denver-Minnesota. That one... Yes, that was the... That series was awesome. That series so, yeah. has been very up and down like first you yes. have the t-wolves going in and taking stealing two in denver mm-hmm. then crazy you, then denver goes back to minnesota and steals two in uh, minnesota then they win game five yeah then they win game five in denver and then they lose and then they lose game six in minnesota yeah and then they every and then right, right then we go back to denver Series tied 3 3, game seven. And who would have thought Carl Anthony Towns would have showed up? Yeah. You know, catch who up. Like, like, I, and, and had a good game, but it wasn't as insane as everyone thought it would be. And, um, honestly, the, the game fell on the role players. The stars yeah. showed out when they needed to. Um, when MPJ, Aaron Gordon, and, uh, Katerius Caldwell Pope combined for 15 points. Yeah. Even Jamal Murray and Jokic having 35 each was not going to help you win that game. No, because then, like, what? They they then combined, like, that's only 95 points between yeah. the entire starting lineup. And, like, that's mm. just not going to be able to keep up, especially because as much as Ant didn't have a great shooting game, once he was able to figure out how to guard Jamal Murray, he didn't like he had him in handcuffs like he oh, really yeah. really could because it was like that first half jamal murray was popping off and just mm. was, like was scoring at will but then once jamal not once jamal once anthony edwards figured it out 
he was incredible. And I mean, the fire that Anthony Edwards brings to that team is something that's so underrated. I feel like mm-hmm. in like this team itself, because like as much as like, obviously it's very important to have great players on the court, but having that energy of like, I am going to beat you. I don't care how we do it. I am going to win is such good energy to have, especially from a guy that's like 22, 23 years old, like, and is just, insanely athletic so fiery is so good because then you have like these older vets on the team like cat and go bear that can play off of that who are that one uh, side note that one go bear shot where he did like a like he did like a spin <laughs> reverse floater like and just nothing but net i was like all right this is game like there's insane. like this dude that was an insane shot from a seven footer to be able to make um that was ridiculous, but yeah, you're right. It was really those role players. I think that also played off of Anthony Edwards' like mm-hmm. passion and his fire because they they looked like a, they were just not losing that game. Period. Like I think Denver looked a bit tired. Like obviously they wanted to win, but I just don't think they had enough in the tank left because like obviously they were playing in the finals last year. So like they've had like a long season this past year. Obviously they had like the off season, but now they're going all the way into game seven outside of an Eastern conference final. And it's like, or Western conference final. And they just, they, they looked exhausted. (laughs) They really did. And I think with the Timberwolves being like so young overall and just like not being there yet, they don't know what it's like. So they're just playing with their heads on fire. Like, all right, let's Mm -hmm. just see what happens. And it was, it was so, it was so good to watch. It was such good basketball. (laughs) And, I don't know. I, I really think that the, the Nuggets, I think they they need to probably improve some of their role players a little bit. But like overall, I don't think this is this should be called for panic at all. Like they won the finals last year, for God's sake. Like obviously you get all these talking heads that are going to be like, blow it up. Uh, trade Jamal Murray. Uh, like just like some crazy crap. It's like, no, take a breath. They're fine. They're fine. They like the fact that they made it to a game seven after just defending a title like it's all good. I think they there's some places they can improve on, but like they kind of just got to keep running it back until the wheels fall off at this point because mm-hmm. Nicole Jokic is still the best basketball player on the planet overall. Jamal Murray Insane. is an incredible number two. Like you got that core there. Just don't overthink it. <laughs> Exactly. And um, like I was looking at the box score, like mm-hmm. the reason the Nuggets lost that game, Jaden McDaniels, 23, Cat, 23, Gobert 13, Anthony Edwards 16, Conley 10, Nas Reed 11, and then yeah. like some no names that don't didn't really do much, but still like, and then you look at the Nuggets like yeah, Jokic Murray 34, 35, AG MPJ and KCP f- four, seven and five. Like you're not and yeah. Christian Braun too. Like they're six man five points. Yeah, you're not winning an NBA game with those stat lines from your role players and mm-hmm. usually role players play better at home. And I mean, I guess the pressure w- was on them. A- AG the other day like was like 10 for 11 from the field or something and Cal yeah. was like what am i supposed to do and yeah. then i don't know we're just stop showing up mpj who's like this like uh what was it michael they don't pay me to pass the ball porter jr yeah exactly i think, I think if the nuggets want to start winning they got to teach that man to pass the goddamn rock <laughs> yeah like you keep like from the field he went uh, what was it? it was like one for something it was like i think he made like uh, he was he was shooting three for twelve. He was shooting tour dates out there. Yeah, he, three for twelve is not a great look from your designated shooter <laughs> on the yeah. court. Um, yeah, I mean happen. you're so right. Yeah, you're you're so right because like those that those stats were so telling because it's like you can see how like spread out the scoring is that like mm-hmm. just everybody was scoring like a decent amount. Everybody was chipping in. It was it's a real team game. It's not just like all right, Anthony Edwards takes over the game scores 50 and then the rest of the team kind of just gets backpacked it's like no like every single person is contributing to scoring on this team and i think that is nearly impossible to beat with by just only having two true superstar players when you have a team that can put up a minimum of like 10 to 15 points each and obviously Mm -hmm. you have some guys going higher and lower but like there's nothing you can do at that point (laughs) <laughs> yeah like it, it just I, it was a great series overall like i, I thought mm-hmm. it was gonna be a sweep at first i mean after you lose two in a row at home 
Yeah. I honestly thought they were going to go back to Minnesota and just like win the next two because it looked like the Nuggets had no answer. I mean, they lost by like double digit points both those games. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was nuts. Mm -hmm. I mean, good. I mean, the Nuggets, they shouldn't blow it up. And like, I'm very excited for the Timberwolves, such a young team. They're going to do a lot. And Ant's a rising star right now. Um, where do where do we think he ranks in the NBA like it, as a player? <sighs> Talking to Ant. Um, yeah, hmm. I don't know because he's because st- he is still so young. Mm-hmm. I would say like he's definitely like because uh, he's not in like that like Jokic, Embiid, Giannis. Um, I'm trying to think about who those other like. Because he's not in that like upper tier of mm-hmm. like true like actual guys that can like take over games. Yet, I would say he's probably in like the higher end of like tier two elite. I would because like obviously it's like I'm not just putting about like a number per se, but like mm-hmm. your tier ones are going to be like your big body guys. At least this is how the NBA kind of rolls now. But it's like your your big body guys that can just take over games, Giannis and Bede, Jokic. Then you have like your guys that, that are a bit older but are still legendary, like a Steph Curry, a KD, even a LeBron at times, or an Anthony Davis. But I think Anthony Edwards, with how young he is and how much like talent he's shown, I think is like knocking on the door kind of thing of – getting into like that top tier because the way he's able to lead this like this team i don't know like he has like that right passion that right mindset like i don't think he's there yet into like the oh this dude's like the face of the league but i think he's getting close i think if he gets like another year or two under his belt and he really starts refining his game i think this dude could Mm -hmm. easily be like the next guy in the league for a long time yeah like i'm looking online on the nba stats his only Mm -hmm. stat that he ranks top five in is usage percentage at 31.4 the -hmm. rest of it i mean yeah like he's not he's not your like team he's not the one on the team that's gonna drop like 40 a game he's no luca he's not a Embiid yet yeah or Giannis. he's not up there yet like even cats up there at um let's see cats up there in some stats too here too but I think what's going to happen is, um, yeah, let's see. Center's points per game. Cat is top five. Edwards is not top five. I don't know where he ranks for his position, but I think I feel like right now. I mean, he was a first round pick three years ago. Give him another year or two, and I think he'll like have that. Like, I I think his like comp right now in my head is like he's similar to Tyrese Maxey, where like both yeah. of them are on the come up still. Like if without Embiid, Maxey could lead the team to a win but it also depended on how the role players played whereas say someone like steph who could just take over a game or in and be, exactly. could take over a game and win the game by himself so i it's gonna be interesting to see what he does and what moves minnesota makes in the offseason but like that pairing of ant and um cat has been working out pretty well and nas reed is a bucket six man of the year <laughs> yeah. I, he's super good what a legend that, dude i love that <laughs> The putback he had was insane. I, oh I was just God. watching. I'm like, there's no way. I forget which game it was, but I know the one game they it was Nas Reed night, and they all like they gave fans just towels that said Nas <laughs> Reed on them. <laughs> it's like he's like the meme player that like is actually no. good for once, and it's like, oh my God, this is perfect. Like I saw some grandma get a Nas Reed tattoo on her, <laughs> like. This this dude's incredible. Like he, that's their glue guy right there. That's just mm-hmm. like like you're saying he can have those like iconic moments that like oh yeah he has this putback and he only has like you know seven or eight maybe ten points like on a good night, but he has like those big moments that really set that team uh, apart and get them going. So exactly. love Nas Reed. Love yep, and um Jaden McDaniels, uh, you're a clown for trying to oop it to yourself and dunk and get blocked in the like the last thirty seconds. Oh God. I mean I don't oh god. I don't hate that because like look, I oh he had some balls on him, man. <laughs> like they were up seven, I think. And like the he's alley ooping it to dude. Because the whole sequence was 
you have Ant dribbling up the court, waving bye to the Denver fans, and then I think yep. MPJ tried to steal the ball from him. Then he yeah. passes it to Jaden McDaniels in the, the paint, who tries to bounce it off the floor and dunk. Dude, oh my god, that was so bad. That could that if he actually dunked that on, I forget who was trying to block him. If he posterized no a dude. While doing that, I think the benches might have cleared. I think uh, they're getting think into a fight was, immediately. Who was it? It might have been Justin. Brown. No, it might have been Reggie Jackson. Oh, Reggie Jackson. Or KCP. One of the two. Okay. Dude. Oh, my God. I that can't. was so funny. That but was then, so, yeah, so I, funny. And then moving on to our third game seven, or not a third, uh, the, not third game seven. Moving on to another close series. Oh yeah, the Ma- yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Run. Ma- uh, the Mavs, Mavs take thundered. down the number one seed Thunder four to two. God damn! Yeah, Derek Lively, who is, yeah. Wait, let me see. So he's twenty years old. He was uh, the first round pick this past year. He had, you know, he only had, he's like a role player. He only had like 12 points. He had 15 rebounds. I think this dude's, wait, hang on. Oh yeah, he is, I think he's a center, I believe. Yeah, he's a center, yeah. So he had 15 rebounds and is 20 years old and is matching up against Chet and is doing real well, like absolutely incredible throughout the series. Obviously you have Luca and Kyrie doing their magic, I don't know who thought that it wasn't going to be a good idea to put them together, but they were proving everybody wrong out there. I mean, really sucks for the Thunder because like they're such a young team, but oh my God, the Mavs got good at the right moment. They exactly. really, really did. And that's just what the playoffs have been so far. Just teams getting very, very good and hot at the right moment. I mean, I thought the Sixers were very good and hot at the moment going in yeah. like a nine game win streak. Then Embiid gets rid of his stupid braids. And next thing you know, we're ass again, but it, it's the whole playoff so far has just been teams getting hot at the right moment. And I mean, looking at the box score, let's see Luca 29, Kyrie 22 and Luca had a triple double that game. Yeah. He put, he came to life in game six and five. And I mean, let's see Derek Jones also 22 points solid. Derek Lively, he was like the role players showed up and the on the Thunder side of things. I mean, Jalen Williams, 22, Chet, 21, Shea with 36. And basically, that's it. Um, our favorite uh, rising star, Josh Giddy. Oh, okay. Ugh. Okay. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> he he only had two points, 10 minutes. He didn't really contribute much. Aaron Wiggins, zero. I mean, this was the the final score of game six was one point. Like this could have easily gone to a game seven. As oh well. yeah, absolutely. Like that was clearly like two of the best teams in the West, just beating the crap out of each other. Like yep. the entire time, like they looked, both teams were like, they were aggressive. They were playing hard the entire time. And like, you know, it does suck that the end of the game came down to a foul and then two free mm-hmm. throws to win them the game. But I mean, it, it was a foul. Let's be very clear. Yes. It, I, I need it to, sucks. I have, I have a lot of opinions on reading because I didn't see, see, watch the game, but I saw like yeah. the final like foul thing and people yeah. in the co- Mavs fans and comments, that's not a foul. And I'm watching it. I'm like, what? He, he yeah, smacked like he hit his hand. hand. Like, how are you guys going to sit there? Like, I understand it sucks, but like, it, again, if you're in that situation, don't foul him. You let him shoot it. If he makes it, he makes it. Yeah, exactly. Like you can't let them go. Like, or like at that point, it's like if you are if you believe that he is going to make that shot, you need to foul him like crazy yeah. and then force him to the free throw line. So d- like it, you got to pick one or the other. It's either got to mm-hmm. be do not let him shoot by any means necessary or sit back and let him shoot. Because if you th- think that he's going to make it, you got to just foul him. And then just hope that he misses a free throw and then go to OT or you can't touch him because like they're going to call that. And like, it sucks, but I don't want to see people whining like, Oh, you can't call it in that moment. It's like, what do do rules just not apply in like the final, like 30 seconds of a game? Like, can I just go out and slide tackle somebody? But, Oh, you can't call it in this moment because uh, the, the rules don't apply. I guess like, that's not how that works. Like, 
if you're so like, concerned I mean, about winning the game, like don't foul him. <laughs> like, exactly. And looking at it, I mean, also NBA g- games come down to story of free throws. And I mean, the Mavs had were 17 for 24 and the Thunder were 13 for 17. So clearly the Thunder were fouling the Mavs a lot more. And the difference shows in the final score too. I mean, it's one point, but still like having, if they, they shot seven more free throws than your team did. Yeah. Like then that's the thing. And like, obviously you're going to get the heel without it. Like, you know, you break it down in slow motion. This could be a foul. This couldn't be a foul, mm-hmm. whatever. Like at that point, if it comes down to one point, like you cannot put yourself in the situation that the refs are deciding the game. Like it yeah, should exactly. never come. Like you are professional athletes. You should be good enough. And they are good enough that they could have won that game by more than one point. And like, it, it, looking at the stats again, the Mavs had 17 turnovers in that game. The fact yeah. you didn't, and you didn't like the differential it, Mavs had 17 um, Thunder had eight. So differential of nine turnovers and you didn't capitalize on that. If you exactly. if you're if both teams capitalized and scored a bucket on every um turnover, yeah. you win that margin by eighteen, or you you'd have eighteen points right there. Yeah, exactly. So, like it, it doesn't make sense. It it's just it, yeah. There's clearly so many other factors besides mm-hmm. just the refs in games that do impact it. Now, obviously, you're gonna get the two minute reports that are like, okay, well, yeah. this was a foul. This wasn't a foul. If it's like at the end of the day, like it, it needs to come from the teams. Like you need to be able to play through that. Like you have to understand that. Like, yes, do the refs always need to be better? Absolutely. The refs are terrible mm-hmm. every year, but you know that, you know, the refs are going to be bad and you should be able to play beyond that. Like you are like, you're mm-hmm. getting paid millions of dollars to play this sport it shouldn't have to come down to complaining about the refs at the end of a game. Like you should be skilled enough to not slap somebody's hand as they're going up for a shot, like in that critical moment. Like it's that simple. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. And then Shea goes out there in the press conference and he's like, I shouldn't have fouled him. I don't know what exactly. I was like he, he understands that he knows that. And then you get these like people in the comments that are like, Oh, but it, the, the ref sold the game. Meanwhile, Shea is being, who's like 22 years old is like more mature than everybody. And it's like, yeah, you know, I fouled him at the end there. I shouldn't have fouled him. Like, I got to be better, but we'll we'll be good for next year. Like just the most mature mindset possible for somebody who is absurdly young in our position, like basically our age, because Justin and I talked about this last week, like thinking about like a group of us and our friends on the basketball court. And after losing a, a critical game, getting a mic shoved in your face and saying, yeah, so the refs blew the game, right? (laughs) <laughs> like and to be able to have the poise to say like no i committed the foul i need to be better is amazing I, like sh- like shy really did an amazing job responding to that and i'm not worried about this thunder team at all going forward all. they have so many first round picks in the next like three years it is ridiculous like the, the josh giddy you better not. get to start like josh giddy is going to be learning chinese because if he's going to be putting up these terrible games he's going to be replaced with like four first round picks <laughs> like this Bro, dude is to focus screwed. on basketball instead of underage women like like uh, yeah actually, he's about to be out of a job real quick because if he keeps putting up those stinkers at the end of games like dude they got a lot of first round picks and they have a mm-hmm. lot of talent on this team you are replaceable <laughs> like, josh giddy you are a washington wizard like unironically he might be going to the wizards in the next coming years like that that was tough that was mm-hmm. really that was a really tough look for him and i think the thunder need to try their best to keep this team together because this young core that 100%. they have of chet and shy especially it's just so good like is so so good and i yeah they just need to keep it together and on the mavs I would say uh, absolutely amazing job proving everybody wrong. Uh, everybody during the season was like, Luca and Kyrie don't work together. Luca needs to shut up and play basketball. He's always whining to the rest, blah, blah, blah. This team looks dangerous, like very, very mm-hmm. dangerous because they 
are it's going to be a tough matchup against the Timberwolves because of how big they are overall with Gobert and Cat up front. But with how well Luca and Kyrie have been playing off each other, they could just try to shoot the lights out the gym. Like because that's yeah. the thing is that Anthony Edwards can only cover one of them. And then they need to have a big in the middle. That's probably going to be Gobert. And look, Cat's solid on defense, but I don't know if he's going to be able to guard Luca or any or another guy like that. And if you're leaving Luca without your primary defender on him, he's going to cook. <laughs> this man mm-hmm. is going to be able to figure it out. And I am very happy for the Mavs. I think they have a legitimate shot at beating the Timberwolves. Um, Kyrie, uh, th- a guy that notes here that he's 14 and 0 in closeout games. It's insane. <laughs> this man is delivering daggers left and right. I love it. Yeah. So, Kyrie, please focus on winning the Western Conference final and not on the earth being flat. You have a legitimate <laughs> shot at winning another ring. Please don't screw this up. <laughs> yep. Remember when Justin called me insane for having the. Yeah. Not the Timberwolves. Not the, I, I mean, I think I had the Timberwolves losing in the second round, but yeah, I was Mavs. called insane for having the Mavs going this far. Yeah. I mean, and look, the tails in the, we have evidence of this. Justin's um picks were dead wrong. Yeah. He had Very the Lakers bad. going all the way. Like, yeah. Yeah. That was, that was, ugh, whatever. It's fine. He's, yeah, now that he's not on the podcast, we can rip him a new one. Uh, yeah, Justin, your takes are terrible, uh, even though uh, I love you for editing this. Love you, Pookie. Um, yep. But, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I don't think this is, like... But the thing is, is like, what if the if the Mavs get bounced this next round? Like, what do they do kind of thing? Because know, Luke, and, it's, Luke it's and Kyrie hard. are working. Do they need, like, a, mm-hmm. another big like do they need like another shooting guard like what are they i feel like if anything they would need defense but they just they but um uh, i think what was it I, the guy that i just mentioned i think it was Derek lively uh mm-hmm, Derek lively. yeah Derek lively he's been playing pretty well as a center i mean i guess they kind of need like almost like a defending shooting guard kind of thing but maybe i don't but know the thing is Kyrie and luca are your shooters also so yeah so it's tough i don't know I don't know where they go. It's this obviously these next couple games that are coming up are going to be very mm. very interesting because I mean this is going to really determine where both of these franchises go. Cuz I think for the for the Wolves if they end up if they end up getting knocked out by the Mavs like I think they try to keep the core together but I don't know how long they're going to be able to keep running it back with Cat and Gobert. Because I feel mm-hmm. like I don't. If, uh, could you look up like when their contracts expire? Um, because I feel like Cat just got extended recently, and I think they paid Gobert already. But the Anthony Edwards super max that is locked and loaded in the chamber eventually is going to nuke that team's cap space. And like they do need obviously some positional guys to like fill out their roster. But it's just going to be interesting to see because like I don't know how long they're going to be able to keep two vets on the team like that. Yeah, cats cats go till twenty twenty eight. Okay. Yeah, and I thought they just paid him recently. Yeah. Go bear is. Go bear is good until twenty twenty six. Okay, so they they'll be fine for at least another two years. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, okay, yeah, so they fine. they still have a, they still have a little bit to run it back. All right, but. Yeah, that that Anthony Edwards Supermax. Oh my god, that's going to be so much money. It's gonna be crazy. I mean, <laughs> we might as well just go right into it with the Timberwolves and the Mavs matchup. Um, oh yeah, it, it's going to be a bloodbath. It could go in yeah. my head. I'm. It could go either way. I don't know who's going to win. I mean, for my prediction, I want the Mavs. I think I want them. I think I want the Mavs to win for my prediction. But man, watching Anthony Edwards play is just so electric. Yeah. So. I really don't know who I want to win. Like, I'd be happy with either team winning. Yeah, I I really like the teams that came out of the West. They're really like likable teams. Uh, I think it's gonna be my prediction is gonna be Wolves and six. I I think I like that. Yeah, I, I think, think I'm gonna have Mavs and six. Mavs and six. Okay, because this again, this is like this could change 
with, drastically by the time we are recording again. So mm-hmm. this could all be complete garbage. Like one of these teams could have swept the other. I could see that happening. Just like one of them coming out the gate. I could also see this going to seven. This is going to be a really, really fun. This is going to be a really fun matchup because like oh, you have yeah. two incredible shooting guards with some solid defenders up front going against two pretty good bigs with Anthony Edwards as the point guard. So it's like you got two very different styles of basketball hitting each other right at, at the Western Conference Finals. So mm-hmm. I'm excited to watch this. I think first game's tonight, I believe, as we're yeah, recording this. Yeah, so that'll be uh, a good let's game see, to watch. Let me see the lines for it. Yeah, check those lines. T-Wolves versus Mavs. Uh, forgot to write betting okay here we go <laughs> that would do it i'm surprised it didn't just like auto correct to that no me too here we go okay so we got the spreads four and a half m- minus four and a half minnesota okay uh over under 207 so respectable 10 103 104 game yeah from each if it's even um Money lines are minus 189 and plus 157. So basically, it's just because the Timberwolves are home. Yeah. Yeah. It really does seem like there's not really a huge favorite. And let's see. uh, The Timberwolves are pretty much even against the spread. And the Mavs are 55 and 39 against the spread. So it's going to be pretty interesting. So the Mavs are slightly better against the spread. Basically, yeah. But I mean, regardless of that, I mean, it's just like... This game is so even like it's just like the Sixers and Knicks series. It just kept flip flopping based on who's Homer. Who's yeah, away. it really I I think that's exactly what it's going to be. Um, but yeah, like I I'm really excited. I'm really excited for this matchup. There's going to be some great basketball that's going to be played. Unlike this other series that we're going to be talking about in the Eastern Conference Finals, which is going to be Pacers Celtics kind of alluded to it earlier. Um, but the Celtics ended up taking game one in overtime. Um, mm-hmm. That was a an electric performance <laughs> by the Celtics to be able to, to come back into that game, hit that three at the end of the game to set it to OT and then ended up winning by one. Mm-hmm. I think it was right. Yeah. One. I think it was How one point, but then they started fouling, so it was like maybe like five. Right. Sorry, this is this podcast has turned into two guys with a computer <laughs> just yeah, googling yeah, was, things to double check. One twenty eight to one thirty three, but I think it's <laughs> okay, like it yeah, was probably yeah. a one, it was point, like a one point game, fouled. but then they started fouling. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So very close game um by both teams there. And of course it was exactly like what we thought. Uh, the Pacers were just shooting the lights out the gym. Uh, mm-hmm. They were just chucking up shots. I mean, let's check these stats here. Yeah, so you have um, Siakam with 24, Nesmith with 14, Miles Turner with 23, Halliburton with 25, um, Nembard with 12, TJ McConnell with 13, Obi Toppin with 15. Like, everybody was shooting here. Yeah. Yeah, and then but if, on the Celtics end, we yeah. have uh, Tatum with 36, Brown with 26, Horford with 15, Drew Holiday with 28. Where did that come Boyd from? 15. Yeah. Like, that might have been the difference maker for um, the Celtics with Drew Holiday finally yeah. figuring it out and dropping 28. 100%. Like, they, I mean, clearly they weren't winning this game without Holiday having one of his best games, like, ever. Um, and it's going to be really interesting for game two, I think, because. I think it's now very obvious to the Pacers that the Celtics cannot keep up with them shooting wise and the Celtics need to do a way better job defending because Mm -hmm. it it's very, very clear that the Pacers are a better overall shooting team. Now, when it comes to like defense and all that, who knows, but if they want to, they can just start shucking up shots and they're going to be landing. So the notorious game two Celtics at home, I think they're probably going to lose game two (laughs) because hammering Pacers money. You have to, it might be like plus 500 at this point, but you have to take Pacers just because of how historically bad the the Celtics have been game two for some reason, (laughs) but it doesn't make sense. But I mean, basically the Pacers have the win in the bag. That whole like yeah. last few second sequence, they 
had the ball, they inbounded it, and then he fell out of bounds with the ball. Like, you can't so have that. You yeah. had it in the bag. All you had to do was just dribble the clock out and let them foul you. And that was like, it's similar to what happened to the Knicks and Sixers in game two. Yeah. Where you they still had a timeout. You could have played it smart, you know, slow it down, get a nice inbound play, and dribble the ball out. Yeah, exactly. But, but that didn't happen. And Jalen Brown decided to nail a huge three. You go to overtime, and yeah, the Celtics pulled through in the last five minutes, and the Pacers didn't. And game two, I mean, Pacers probably will blow them out just because that's what <laughs> happens game two there. But, but I think it's going to be a gentleman sweep. The Pacers are good, but do I want to see them beat the Celtics? Hell yeah, but I don't see it happening. I, I just don't know how sustainable this shooting is by the Pacers mm-hmm. because they are shooting at a ridiculous, ridiculous percentage like i think let's see they were so they were they shot 50 percent from the field in game one and shot 37 percent from three like i understand that the pacers overall are like that's like just their game plan is just to throw the rock up and hope it goes in but Mm -hmm. i I don't know how long they're going to be able to do that for I don't know if they're just because if they get on a cold streak, they're going to lose. Like if they miss like a couple shots in a row and the Celtics just keep scoring and hammering it on and then the Pacers are playing catch up, it's going to be really, really hard for them to come back. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I definitely see a path for the Pacers to win, especially after game one and now with game two on the horizon. I would say... I could see this going low key. I could see this going six. I could see it going six. It could happen. I could see because I could see because what the Pacers will win game two, so it's going to be split one and one. Then it would be Celt. I guess you would split again. And you know, oh, I could low key see this going six or seven. Now that I'm thinking about it, it Um, honestly. It's so hard to tell. You know what? Pacers in seven. Let's see it. Let's send the meme team to the finals. Let's do it. I like Why that. not? Why not? Pacers in seven. They'll shoot the lights out the gym. I love it. Yeah, and I mean, looking at it too, like the Pacers got to fix their fouling issues because they you do, can't let the Celtics shoot thirty free throws. Yeah, you. Yeah, that was that's ridiculous. You can't let them. Yeah. And especially they were 80% from the... Fr- oh, my God. Wait, wh- hold on a second. The The free throw matchup was 30 to 10? Mm-hmm. The Celtics only fouled them 10 times? Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully that wasn't the, uh, the the old Boston refs getting the nice, hand, nice money handshake there. But good Lord, Pacers. You cannot be... Yeah, you can't expect to win a game fouling a team... 30 times like that's mm-hmm. and obviously it's probably a little bit inflated because of the end where they're probably going to be fouling a lot more but even still like 20 is a lot 30 is ridiculous let's see there's 23 personal fouls for the pacers and 15 for the celtics but Damn. yeah no like you can't do that and expect to win games you, you just can't you can't have that and yeah, because like they got twenty four points off of free throws alone. Because mm-hmm. that's a plus. What's that? A plus fifteen margin then? Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah, it's a plus. Yeah, so the Celtics netted fifteen extra points off of free throws alone. That's crazy. I didn't even realize that that stat was there. Oh my god! Yeah, Pace, you got to figure that out. You know, I'm gonna regret this pick now that I'm. And I just yeah. said Pacers at seven, but you know what? I'll stick to my guns. <laughs> yeah, they, they the really got to figure just that out. Simply fouled less, they would have won that game. Yeah, they they would have they they would have won that game. They would have won the game if they figured out their inbound pass. Like, yeah, damn. All right. Damn, that's tough. I might have just screwed myself with that pick. But you know what? I'm going to stick to it. Pacers in seven. Send the meme team to the finals. Mm-hmm. Have them be stupid and keep this core together with unsustainable shooting. And then they're going to be very, very <laughs> much. They're going to be much worse off later down the line. But whatever. Wow. <laughs> whatever. I'm going to take Celtics in five. I think it's just going to be a gentleman sweep. And okay. how, I don't think they're going to be able to sustain it. 
Okay. So we got Celtics in five, Pages in seven. All right. I love it. All right. Now, one of our final things that we're going to be talking about is what Justin has been wanting to talk about forever at this point. And, of course, the one time that he's not on this goddamn podcast, that's when we're going to be talking about it. Of course, when Justin comes back, he'll probably have his own thoughts and opinions and probably respond to us being dumbasses on here. Um, But he has wanted to talk about J.J. Redick to the Lakers as a head coach. So what are your thoughts and opinions, Mr. Raj Patel, on J.J. Give me the rock. I'm shooting the ball. Redick as the head coach. It can't get much worse from from here. From the, um, <laughs> the Lakers. But like, let's be real. Like, every Lakers head coach that's gone through LA, I just sit there and I'm like, do the coaches do anything for that team? I've always felt like LeBron's just been the coach the whole time. I know. I, the thing that always confused me is like. The head coach that they had, was it Vogel something? I forget what his name is. I think he, he's the head coach somewhere else now. But Frank Vogel? Yeah, Frank Vogel. He was, like, fine. I don't know why they fired him. But, of course, you know, with the media always screaming about the uh, the L.A. Lakers, I don't – I understand why he was fired. I don't understand the reasoning behind it. But at this point, I feel like – a lot of the coaches that they've kind of like had have just been like, especially this past guy, I feel like it's just been like a traffic cone. Like he really didn't do anything. Like you could clearly tell that like there's like the one clip of like Anthony Davis and LeBron just not even paying attention to what he's saying at one point. Cause like he, some of these guys have been playing basketball. Well, LeBron specifically has been in the NBA alone for 21 years, let alone playing the sport of basketball, probably for a minimum of 30 But I think, like, I don't hate the idea of J.J. Redick being the head coach of this team. Because if anybody's going to be able to understand a veteran presence in the locker room and be able to, like, really draw off of that, it's a player that was, like, he was a, like, his position was, he was a three-point shooter. Like, that's what he did. Like, he understands, like, everybody having a role in the team to be able to help the team overall. And I think him and LeBron have a very good chemistry together, um, as we've seen on their podcast a couple times. And, you know, I don't hate it. Like, I really, I think, I don't know how well necessarily it'll work out in the long run, Mm -hmm. because obviously we haven't seen J.J. Reddick coach or what, like, his style specifically is. But I think he would be a decent fit, just, like, at least personality-wise, because, like, we've seen him... Like, he's not afraid to state his opinion and really go after people, even if they are in, like, so-called positions of power or, like, J.J. Redick will rip you a new one if he needs to. Um, so, like, I I don't I don't hate it. Like, I, I, think I, I think I actually like it. Now, of course, this could all crash and burn instantaneously when the Lakers go, like, 12 and 62, but, you know, whatever. Well, yeah. But I think I think Reddit it'll be interesting because what I don't even really know what Darvin Ham did as the Lakers <laughs> yeah. coach. Like, yeah. Like honestly, I say go for it and try it out. Like Frank Vogel, he was a decent head coach. Like he won the Mickey Mouse bubble ring, whatever. <laughs> and then after that, he was still there for two more seasons. And I mean, yeah, some things didn't go the Lakers' way. I mean, injuries happen. D'Lo mm-hmm. sucks. You had Russ at some <laughs> point. But like, still like. I, the Vogel firing did catch me a little off guard. The Darvin Ham one did not. Yeah, this one was that you could see the writing on the wall pretty pretty clearly of like what players clearly thought, what fans thought, what media. It was like everybody was like, yeah, this dude doesn't really know what he's doing. And yeah, I. <sighs> What would be funny is if they tried to get Doc Rivers and really go with the uh, the meme experience there. That's but, crazy. Yeah, he's he's still banished to Milwaukee. But yeah, mm-hmm. like I I don't know what I don't know what Darvin Ham was doing, but he, it was yeah. As I was saying, very clearly just did not have he didn't he lost the locker room. That was very clear. And exactly. after a certain point, you just gotta you gotta give up while you're still ahead. Like they have mm-hmm. some talent on the roster. Obviously, you still have LeBron, you still have Anthony Davis. 
Austin Reeves is a solid role player. Hichimura is good whenever he decides to play um, and not screw up your parlay. Um, Vanderbilt's also pretty good at times. But, like, I think they just need, like, another guy in there that's, like, I because I feel like it's not only just JJ Reddick coming as the head coach is just going to turn it around instantaneously. Like they need to kind of figure out this roster because D'Lo needs to get sent to the moon at this point. Like I I understand he's good every once in a while. Yet that's not how you win games. Like he is not consistent not, not enough to win basketball games. Period. And he I don't know because again great guy. I loved him when he was on the Brooklyn Nets. That team was like all vibes. I love him as a player, but he's just not what they need right now. What they need is like a somewhat veteran guy that they can just rely on for like a consistent like 15 points in a game. Like nothing insane, just like, oh yeah, that's a good player. Like that that's what they need. And not like a super young guy that needs to time to develop. Like they kind of need to win now because LeBron yeah. is 39. Anthony Davis is getting up there. Like if they're gonna try to the win with LeBron, Golden State. <laughs> oh God, don't even say that. LeBron to Golden but, State uh, would break the internet. Um, God, but I've, I've been looking at the other um, head coaching. Um, yeah, they're considering the assist, the Celtics assistant head coach, and they're considering the Pelicans assistant head coach. Now, I've never heard of these two before, but I've heard of JJ Redick. And I mean, do you take someone who has an assistant coaching job on? a very good winning team or a playoff team the last two out of the last three years or do well, you take someone who's unproven yeah because if anything you go with the celtics guy i don't know mm-hmm. why they're looking at the pelicans i mean like they've been good but like the pelicans assistant head coach for the head coaching position like i don't know if that's really like the direct correlation there but yeah, I think oh, that's tough because like personally I would probably go with the more the, with the more experienced like more experience just like as an actual coach, but I mean, if you're going to risk it, you might as well go all in. Like if you're going to just yeah. say like screw it, let's see what happens. Like for all you know, this could be the Lakers head coach for the next 20 years. Like yeah. cuz former player was an was an amazing player clearly has great chemistry with current nba players like mm-hmm. basketball iq out of like out of this world like why not like what are you going to yeah, do they want to try to see if they can do a pat riley uh, like thing pat riley yeah. analyst everything he went in and he had a pretty good coaching stint too and i mean what you do is if you go out there and you can understand the game like that you know how to like I will say, like, I feel like some analysts might be good coaches. Yeah. I mean, it's we've definitely seen the analysts go from, like, playing to then, like, coaching uh, in the past and even in other sports and stuff. So, like, this isn't something like, oh, this is completely unheard of. Like, this isn't <laughs> this isn't Ted Lasso coming in from, like, Ireland. It's like, some guy that's <laughs> never played basketball in his life is mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah, I'm kind of just here. It's like, no, like, this was a like former NBA, like one of the better three point shooters of all time. Um, and like, he clearly has all of like the characteristics to be a good head coach, but then it's like, Oh, like as the general manager, at least it's like, am I signing my name up for the JJ Redick experience? Because if he crashes and burns, I am out of here as well. So that's kind of where it comes down to. And, you know, if I was the GM, might be favoring more coaching experience, but I could get talked into JJ Redick. I mean, if he interviews well and like he's able to set up a good, if he's able to show that he knows what he's doing when it comes to like actually coaching and managing these players, like screw it. Let's see how it works. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like looking at it, trying to see like the crossover, like a lot of NFL coaches were former players oh, yeah. too. Oh, like yeah. Especially some health coaches. I know uh, Doug, Doug Peterson, he was a head coach. Uh, he played for the Eagles at some point as a QB. Oh, yeah. Doug like a- Peterson, uh, Dan Campbell. Um, uh, pff, I'm trying to think about who else off the top of my head. Uh, I can't really think. I know a, a bunch of uh, head mm-hmm. coaches were former. Oh, D'Amico Ryans um, yeah. was another one. Um, 
he's not a head coach anymore, but Mike Vrabel, um, Mm -hmm. he is another one like there. Yeah. Especially that's what I was kind of referring to like in the NFL, especially like there's tons of former players that are now head coaches. Um, I mean, or even like just positional coaches too. I mean, it's like that you, they work their way up. Like D'Amico Ryan's, he was, um, he was, he, he was on the Niners as D coordinator before. He was a defensive coordinator, but he was a linebacker on the Houston mm-hmm. Texans. Yeah, exactly. So it's like that, just that progression, like post NFL, like I'm sure Jason Kelsey will like start, like do something for the Eagles. He's probably at camp right now, training up Jurgens to try to like get him to like figure out everything and oh I mean, absolutely and even in the nba cool. you have somebody like larry bird who was a head coach who like led that pacers team that and they were a really good team for a while yeah. like it, like this is not something that's completely unheard of so mm-hmm. you know what i'm convinced jj reddick like go take that head coaching job go prove all of them wrong i love mm-hmm. it i've been yeah, talking no, about I this mean- and I feel like Reddick is going to, like, be able to bring in a staff that, like, you know, knows him, knows his play style, who he is mm-hmm. as a player and what he believes. Because, I mean, even though he's unproven, I feel like just his name itself, he can easily draw some attention. Oh, yeah. From, like, other teams and coaches be like, hey, I would love to come be your, like, assistant coach or whatever. Like, oh, 100%. He could, easily get, he could easily garner so much. And, like, he has the access to all these former players, too. Yeah. Like imagine like a Shaq out of nowhere is like yeah, no. sure, <laughs> that would be so funny if you had JJ Reddick as the head coach and Shaq as one of the assistant coaches. Because like I mean yeah, even MJ he was like a minority owner of the um, Hornets. Yeah, like he didn't coach or anything, but he still had like you know influence on everything. Yeah, and we'll ignore that he also played for the. Whatever, <laughs> ignore that it's yeah, his yeah, other yeah, comeback. Yeah. We don't talk about the the comeback, but yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I, Raj, you've you've talked me into it. I I think JJ Redick should be the next head coach of the Los mm-hmm. Angeles Lakers. Stamp it, put my name on it. I can't wait for that to crash and burn as a take in the next couple of years. It's going to be absolutely hilarious. Justin, Justin, if you're editing editing this and watching this, just know. I am ready for you to come guns blazing next week, just telling us how wrong we are for like 80 different reasons. <laughs> well, you see, he's then just going to like flash on the screen of like, these dudes are morons, like on <laughs> one of our takes, but we're never going to know which one it's going to be because exactly. we are now at Liberty to the edit. We can't control it <laughs> because editor, editor, please, 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 please don't do us dirty. Please. <laughs> All right. Well, that about does it. Uh, we got all of our takes in here for this upcoming rounds. Um, we're going to be reacting next week to the Eastern and Western Conference Finals, where they end up, what's been going on in the news cycle with all the sports, what's been going on in our lives. Uh, so if for some reason you are actually still with us at this point, thank you so much for listening. And uh, we will catch you guys next week. Uh, Harrison Bucker, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs>